forcibly retired industrialist, that's my way of putting it, ex multimillionaire, which I go in and say, oh, ex? No. Um, so, what, um, what validates my presence here today? I can perhaps uh, explain it by saying that the story really started a couple of months or so before I received this document. It's a, it's a, it's a court, it's, this is a genuine court stamp on this occasion. It's got DLA Piper, a big firm of uh, solicitors stamp on it. 15th of September 2003. Uh, it's a, uh, a claim against me personally from a bank called GMAC Commercial Finance, which was originally General Motors Acceptance Corporation, an American uh, invoice discounter and provider of, of finance by way of mortgages and, and loans for industrial companies mostly. And um, they were at the time my group's uh, principal funder, banker. Uh, I had others uh, with Barclays and with Lloyd's TSP. <coughs> I had 11 companies with um, about 650 employees in 10 factories. Sizable turnover, like 70 million or something. And we were very big in steel and engineering, mostly in the Midlands, but some around in Telford and in Doncaster and uh, elsewhere. A uh, very prosperous business. Uh, in the year in question, we were, in spite of paying loads of interest on short-term loans, which we had to, it was the only way we could run our business because uh, there was, then like now, no, no um, proper access to funds for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. Anyway, I got the wrong side of firm of accountants called Deloitte's. I bought a couple of companies off them. I used to buy companies out of administration if they were synergists with my group, which was a steel-based group. And uh, I'd accused them of being corrupt a couple of years earlier when I went to buy a business off them and they shut me out and were going to sell it to one of their audit clients. So I took them on and eventually did buy it, but of course I'd made an enemy. And so in, um, in early 03, they came looking for me because uh, GMAC wanted to um, uh, have a health check uh, carried out on us. It's what they call a collateral review. So 15 Deloitte people come into my whole group of companies and immediately I know that I'm going to be pulled down. So over the next few months they rubbished all our um, forecasts, got values in to undervalue everything significantly. and. Uh, and put a gun to my head on the uh, Friday the 13th of June 2003 um, and it's either appoint us administrators today or it's full receivership tomorrow and so uh, we don't really think that full receivership is the right way if you work with us well, you can come out the other side with a bit smaller business but there is life on the other side so with a gun to my head uh, because they had shut off the supply of all the cash flow uh, to pay wages and what do you do? Uh, 600 not people want their wages, you, you've not got many decisions, there's only one way to go in those circumstances. And this, this followed on the uh, receiving the administration of the group of David Fab Holdings Limited, if you want to Google me, it's, uh, you'll see quite a lot of information on Google. And this is a, a claim from GMAC, this is a formality, but it's uh, a claim for 9.972 million 999 pounds 21 pence. <laughs> the good news so is the way it was tomorrow. Peanuts really. The company was worth a great deal more than that. That was the amount which uh, my group owed GMAC particularly. We had some le lesser debt to others. We had seven zero acres of properties. Uh, warehouses and uh, factories and offices and so on. Uh, and a lot of it was earmarked for potential redevelopment and it now has, is being developed massively. But uh, anyway, they pulled me down and I then kept one of the companies which was the only one which wasn't a freehold. It was a high-tech uh, leasehold premises just off the motorway at Junction 10, a high-tech metal basher 
making all kinds of sophisticated products. I've kept that out of the uh, administration by agreement. They threw me a bone, in other words, you'll need something to do. In the next few years, I developed that into uh, five companies, another group growing, um, and I'd mortgage my house, remortgaged it to put 600K uh, into that enterprise. And that was going quite well. But I'd been, in the meantime, of course, banging the drum and, and crying blue murder about the corruption in Deloitte's about how they had pulled down my first very successful business, which in the year in question had made about 880,000 quid after paying uh, loads of interest. So it's a viable business, and it was a, what's called an oligopoly. It's a, got a unique uh, production facility, uh, which is still running in the Midlands. Um, so, so in in uh, after I just I don't know where I only found this the other day. It was in some papers I was going through. Should have should have um, framed it and put it in the toilet, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Along with the old Concord certificate I've got. <laughs> but um, so I've been fighting them ever since, and they uh, out of the blue in December 23rd, 05, by which time I'd got my new group. Uh, expanded to five companies, going very well, but nothing like the size of the first one, which would take me 40 odd years to build up. They issued out of the blue um, allegations, which were totally unfounded, that I had converted, you've heard that word earlier today, mm -hmm. which means stolen, all the contents of this high-tech metal fashion company called CK Engineering. Uh, none of it was true, but they sent it out in a report to creditors and to others, so Barclays, our then banker, were briefed about it over a bref breakfast meeting, I discovered. And so that had the effect of uh, stopping me in my, in my tracks of growing that business. And in the March of 06, uh, that group was put into administration with a firm of, um, of, of uh, receivers appointed by, uh, insisted upon by Barclays, called Vantis. Vantis spectacularly went broke themselves in 2010 after they had sold the assets of that group under the hammer in July 2006. Uh, and they had had by that time about a quarter of a million in fees. And uh, that business, which was, uh, as I say, going well, was, uh, was heavily invested. I put another about a million into it with a remortgage home. But then that meant that I had lost my job in CKE. And um, so uh, then the family home went in, in um, well, after the, uh, the writs were issued against me and CK and my only daughter in December 05, we struggled on till, till March 06. We had to put that into administration because Barclays insisted on it in 06. The assets were sold in July 06, and then by um, I, I was then running out of money, and I was paying a hefty mortgage on a lovely big house. So uh, then I um, the there was then a process in which I was put for uh, which led ultimately to a nine-day trial in September 08. So they issued these allegations in December of six. It took, it took uh, about over two years for it to come to court. They had claimed that the assets that I had stolen were worth over one and a half million, that I hadn't paid a rent on it. There was never any rental agreement. Uh, they didn't inquire about any, any uh, problem with it in the intervening two and a half years from the administration of the first group. However, we eventually had a trial a whole week in Liverpool, High Court, a very senior judge, part her trial, then another four days in the Royal Court of Justice in December. Um, of that year, we, we represented ourselves. Uh, they were eventually awarded on the, on the claim that I'd stolen all the equipment uh, on perjured evidence of a few bits and pieces of fixtures and fittings. They were awarded 35,000 <coughs> 35, pounds which they then told the world they'd won the case and there was a cost order made in their favour. Well, there wasn't really. The judge said that he would award me my costs in respect of the, of the um, re-pleaded or abandoned 
claim, so they succeeded only on 2.5% of the original claim. But of course it was just enough for them to blackguard me and to um, then provide, they issued a statutory order, uh, demand for the, the, that sum and another sum of my director's loan account, which they claimed was in arrears by about 80,000. They got a judgment on that for 52 grand. Independent forensic accountants I, I got later said that on the contrary, the company owed me over 100,000 quid on that matter, but they got what they wanted. They used very expensive barristers and lawyers who were paid between them close to two million. By that time, Deloitte had had about five million. Every bank had been paid in full with big exit penalties. And um, the, uh, the, main, <coughs> the main core steel business was then sold by the property people who bought the whole of the property assets and, and some of the companies which they did not. They liquidated some of the uh, companies and had some of the present, my old management team run the others. Um, and, and then they, in 2010, they sold the core business, uh, steel processing company, to SR Steel in Mumbai for $100 million. Uh, so, I, um, I carried on with the issues that I had overhanging, but they, they got a bankruptcy petition against me uh, in July 2009. And as you've heard today, all the doc, all the the the, uh, the petition was not signed. There was no. Um, it was entirely defective. But they they got railroaded to into bankruptcy, which meant that I had no locus standi in law to take any action against them. And that was that was what, the, want. That was what it was all about. And um, th this resonates with the with the, the Lawrence Tomlinson report. Lawrence Tomlinson. Uh, is a self-made millionaire with care homes and, and uh, genetic cars and other things that he spread north of Leeds and David Peacock and I, I went to see him and had lunch with him at his invitation last July and um, uh, the information that we imparted to him was um, um, it chimed with all the other cases which he Absolutely. put in the Tomlinson report <clears throat> which was not particularly about my sort of situation but it was similar in that it focused on the practice of RBS to, uh, to find asset-rich companies and force them uh, over the cliff uh, to grab the assets. Yeah. And that's still an ongoing situation, although uh, there's no appetite on the part of the government to do anything about these, these um, situations. And whenever I go to see an MP or anybody else, they say, well, it's all been tested in the courts, David. And, um, and the, the ICAAW, the regulator, is the one who looks into wrongdoings on the part of accountants. Well, it's a total joke yeah. because it's self-regulation. And uh, they depend on the Deloitte's of this world for all their, their fee income. And so, uh, but anyway, it's left me with a taste for, uh, uh, and it's, it's still going on. I won't tell you what, what uh, I'm currently engaged in, but the main thing is that I, I reverse the the bankruptcy petition yes. because if, if I do that, and I ought to because the judgment when I when I applied for have it set aside, the judgment uh, was entirely flawed and the judge in that case was really reading out a, a judgment prepared by the other side's barrister. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but um, so uh, in the course of all this I started networking with people and uh, Mr. Ebert had become a very good friend. Uh, and. Um, we were helping each other, and of course, it's very lonely out there at times. So um, we've, we've developed a, a strong network of people who are self-taught lawyers, uh, but we've got different um, areas of expertise because of our, our particular circumstances. And um, while my focus is, is on um, false bankruptcies and, and um, false receiverships and liquidations, uh, it's widened out. Uh, to have uh, involvement with Guy uh, and, um, and Ebert and, and David Pickcock and others uh, into pro bono work uh, where people have been uh, evicted from their homes and generally 
suffering at the hands of the criminals that you've heard so much about today. So I had two companies left and I, I bought these two companies in uh, off an accountant in 2003. They were called January Sun and January Moon, but it was uh, a debenture between them. It's a valuable uh, asset because it gives you, if you're running a, a sizable company, it's, it's, it's helpful to have a top company and a bottom company and a, a debenture between the two of them. So I had in, uh, intended to, I did rename them Alper Industrial. That was going to be the new holding company of the second group. And the second uh, company, January uh, Moon, I renamed Alpha Security Products because we were making loads of high-tech safes and, and uh, cash point type machines for banks and building societies uh, in, in that second group of companies. So anyway, I kept those two companies paid up in the company's house. And um, I've been paying the, the fees, which aren't much, to keep them the dormant companies. but as potential vehicles to do something else with. And so I decided uh, about six months ago that it would be a good idea, uh, give me something to do and refocus, if I renamed uh, Alpa Security Products uh, Alpa Forensics. Now, uh, I come at it a bit late in life, but um, between, it, it, it was quite clear to me that with, with the networking and with the enthusiasm to help each other, that there is in the group, we can achieve a great deal. And what I would like to do is to see this business um, grow into uh, a structure which can uh, have, could stand on its own two feet. At the moment, I'm subsidizing it, and it's in quite a small way. But um, the letterheads, this, this, is, this is not an exclusive list of things that we, we want to uh, look at, but it, we're looking at, um, it, it says sh we're shining the light on false documents, property theft, abusive process, complicit trustees, corrupt solicitors, judicial failure, police participation, direct action strategies, dispute resolution, and political failure, because there is that big element which we've got eventually to influence. We've got to get people in Parliament prepared to say, as they did with Lawrence Tomlinson who came out with this report, it was publicised everywhere. It was on all, all the media, it was in all the papers, and they're well on the way to kicking it in the long grass now, I, I fear. But all the MPs, including mine, who was on the Treasury Select Committee, an idiot called Mark Garnier, uh, who himself is an ex-banker, um, they they have known about a lot of these criminal activities in and out of the courts, but they have done bugger all about it. It's with one or two very exceptions, John Hemming, for one, is uh, one of the people that, you know, he, he's, he's one in 500 and he can really do nothing on his own, as we can do nothing on our <coughs> own. So there, we will be taking this business forward and uh, we will be looking for ways in which we can link with other people with skills and resources, so that when we, we hear of cases, it's like the disgraceful case of Grace McKerska, who's been kicked out of her own home three times in the last three months, absolutely disgraceful. And uh, Paula, who, uh, who I've never met, I've, I've only met Grace like fleetingly four years ago, but we're, we're helping her, and Paula, uh, who's, um, who's got a, um, uh, what is it? It's a wildlife animal animal animal, isn't it? Animal sanctuary <coughs> in, in Durham, uh, another uh, fraudulent uh, eviction. And of course, I've been in the courts and I've heard everything the guys told you was absolutely uh, true. And I'm very impressed with the way he and, uh, and Linda and uh, everybody else around has been weighing in to take on, take on the system. And I think that we've, we mustn't be overconfident, but I think we, we're, we're sort of getting somewhere. And the um, main thing is to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.